Mark Cuban is well known for being outspoken and he's not afraid to tell entrepreneurs on Shark Tank what he really thinks of their idea. Being an experienced and highly successful entrepreneur himself, he usually has a pretty good idea about whether or not a product will work, but he will also know whether or not someone's pitch is genuine. If you just come to the show for exposure or want to sell a questionable product, you better watch out or you might end up like these 9 scammers who felt Mark Cuban's wrath on Shark Tank. Since appearing on the show in 2012, Ryan Naylor and his SO watches have basically become the epitome of scams on Shark Tank. Naylor introduced his timepieces that are built infused with negative ions, which he claimed to be working against the positive ions we are bombarded with by electronic devices, and thus bring the wearer's body back into balance by restoring an ideal energy field. Here's yours. No oh, thanks, go ahead, you keep it. It's Dallas Mavericks blue, just That's for you. That's okay, you keep it. Okay. Thank you. He was asking for $35,000 in exchange for 20% of his company, and the fact that he had sold over 110,000 SO watches in the previous year certainly intrigued Kevin O'Leary. While Lori agreed to put the watches to a test, Mark Cuban immediately bowed out, saying the technology was a joke and he was allergic to scams. This is not new. It's been disproven. What you saw was a placebo effect. There's athletes that wear it. It's a joke. It's a scam. It's not real. I'm out. The other sharks became more and more skeptical too, as Naylor didn't have any tests or data backing the technology up, and Damon then accused him of stealing the design of his timepieces from another company. Eventually, Kevin O'Leary said he would consider investing if Naylor admitted that the negative ion technology was a scam, but the entrepreneur wouldn't do it. How about this? If you admit it's a scam, maybe I'll invest. Is it a scam? I don't, I don't believe it is. Affirming his belief in the technology and going home without a deal in the end. In season 4, Bill Leons pitched his idea of a website called Revestor, a real estate search engine of the future. He was looking for $250,000 in exchange for 10% equity in his company. Leons claimed to have created an algorithm that would help people invest in real estate as it allows you to see a house's value in the future. When Leons said customers would pay $99.99 per month to have access to the website, Mark Cuban outright stated he hated the business and was out. You'll give me a little bit of help with your algorithms. Right, you're not using an archaic spreadsheet. I'm gonna pay you $99 a month for access to that. Right. I hate that business, I'm out. The Sharks appeared to be very skeptical as well and were confused when Leon first said he targeted first time home buyers before later claiming he targeted both typical first time buyers and house flippers. The investors told him that he was speaking from both sides of his mouth and had no business concept which made him appear to be a con artist. But the presentation you came up with today made you appear like a bit of a con artist. I'm not as I'm out. A good inventor doesn't automatically make a good entrepreneur, and Jason Woods, creator of the first electronic powered bodyboard Chimera, definitely wasn't the latter. He was asking for $250,000 for 20% of his company, but while the sharks were intrigued by his invention, they thought the position the rider was in looked awkward and were worried about safety. As the pitch went on, the sharks also noticed that Woods didn't actually have a business plan and had invested about $130,000 of his own money over the previous 10 years, but only managed to come up with a prototype. 130000 over the last 10 years. What did you spend it on? I mean, you could have built prototypes, you could have sold them. something. He didn't have any customers or even a patent, and Mark eventually said that he was full of crap. While Damon told him that it was the worst pitch he'd ever seen on Shark Tank. We gave it to you straight. It's the worst pitch I've ever seen. I'm out. Woods obviously didn't get a deal, but the boards recently became available to purchase for around $3,500. One of the things the Sharks really hate is when people try to use the show as advertisement for their business. So when Adam Tashar entered the tank in Season 7 and introduced his sleepaway camp for adults, Camp No Counselors, to the investors, it didn't take long until the Sharks smelled a rat. He was asking for $300,000 in exchange for 7.5% equity stake in his business, but even though the Sharks liked the business model of the camp-like resort, none of them were interested in investing. Mark Cuban said Tashar was a party promoter 
founder instead of an entrepreneur? You're, you're, you're a party corner. promoter, I want right? you in my corner. Yeah. Well, I, no, I'm serious. I'm at, serious here. At the end of the day, you're Let a party bag. promoter. I like it. And Damon John went even further, calling him a gold digger who wasn't actually looking for any investment, but rather wanted to promote his camps on TV. Are you trying to basically gold dig? Because you're basically saying right now, you don't really need anything from us. Whether Tishar was looking for an investment or was really just on the show for free advertisement, it certainly helped his business as Camp No counselors have since expanded to eight different cities and have been featured in several newspaper and magazine articles. When pitching an idea on Shark Tank, you better know exactly what you're talking about and have some numbers to back it all up. When brothers and doctors Albert and Richard Amini came to the Sharks in Season 5, they introduced their idea of RoloDoc, a mobile app that connects doctors and patients, seeking $50,000 for 20% stake. Although Mark Cuban told them their idea wasn't stupid in theory, the brothers kept throwing in buzzwords like security, encryption, and social media, without any plan to back any of it up, which eventually led to Cuban telling them that their pitch was the worst he'd ever seen. Worst presentation ever. I'm out. Oh, that was mean. Ever. You guys should be smart enough to know. The other sharks were also worried about the liability of RoloDoc and went out one by one due to the very unclear business plan of the app. The Amini brothers eventually went home without a deal and RoloDoc's website hasn't been updated since 2012, so it is probably safe to say that their LinkedIn for physicians failed. In season 6, Aaron McDaniel, founder and CEO of Tycoon Real Estate, not only failed to get a deal, but also didn't make any friends. McDaniel pitched his real estate crowdfunding service as a way for average people to invest in real estate, but while he was convinced it would change the real estate game forever, he completely failed to convince the Sharks that it was a safe model, with Mark Cuban quickly yelling that he hated the idea because it was scammy. Tycoon Real Estate is a crowd investing platform that allows everyday people to invest in real estate for as little as a thousand. I hate it. I'm out. I smell jail time. And Barbara Cochran calling it spooky. Even Kevin O'Leary, who is actually interested in making a deal, asked McDaniel if he had a criminal record. Cuban could barely hide his aversion throughout the entire pitch, calling even the name a ripoff. Just think of the name, Tycoon. Tycoon! Please. Tycoon, what does this say to a small investor? It's a ripoff name. While the others found the thought of online real estate investment with no oversight rather shady and didn't think McDaniel was someone to be trusted with money. Only Mr. Wonderful eventually made an offer to completely rebrand the business with his own name and put up the asking price of $50,000 in exchange for 50%, not the 5% McDaniel had been seeking. But when McDaniel flatly refused, the Sharks couldn't get rid of him fast enough. Thank you guys. I forgot your name already, I'm out. Thank you. <laughs> After noticing that society has a serious problem where people are constantly focused on their phones rather than on each other, Van Gould and Chris Sheldon came up with the No Phone, a gag gift to satirize people obsessed with their smartphones. The No Phone has no screen, no battery, no apps, and no features at all, although the No Phone with the selfie upgrade does come with a mirror. The two were looking for $25,000 for 15% in their company and had already managed to raise $18,000 from a Kickstarter campaign before pitching their idea on the show. Unfortunately, the Sharks didn't like the dumb idea and found it useless to invest in. There's only one thing I hate more than people staring at their phones, and that's dumb patents. After Mark and Lori had dropped out, Robert told Gould and Sheldon that he was impressed they had managed to sell 3,100 units in a few months, but worried that that was the whole market and therefore went out as well. With three sharks out, Damon said he would feel stupid investing in no phone, and Kevin then blasted Gould's and Sheldon's last hopes by calling their idea poo-poo. Listen, the pet rock was a piece of poo-poo too. This is poo-poo. In the season 7 finale, Manish Sethi entered the Shark Tank to introduce Pavlock, a watch-like device that allows you to shock yourself in order to try and break bad habits. Although he gave a smart presentation, the sharks weren't buying it, with Mark calling it a scam and Barbara saying that she had found his presentation exhausting and complicated. Since Sethi was asking for $500,000 in exchange for just 3.14% in his company, Kevin wondered how he had got to the insane company evaluation of nearly 
16 million dollars. However, the main problem was the fact that Sethi had no proof or clinical trial data that the product actually worked and just kept citing studies done by others that talked about the benefits of aversion therapy. Robert also wondered why Sethi assumed that he would have the discipline to shock himself when he didn't have the discipline to stop biting his nails, but when Sethi tried to answer his question, Mark interrupted by yelling that it was all nonsense. Oh, can I okay, so here's but your premises it's are it's nonsense, Robert. It's all nonsense <laughs> across the board. Just, I'm, I, I and when the inventor then said that the device doesn't work if you don't want it to work, Cuban got really agitated and called him a con artist. After about three or four days on like a cookie or tortilla chips, you'll start to notice the flavor changes. The you'll first start to notice the flavor changes. Yeah, you you're do. such a, a con artist. I'm not Kevin was the only one who expressed interest and made a pretty generous offer. For 3.14% equity, he was willing to give Sethi the $500,000 at a loan at 7.5% interest for 24 months. To everyone's surprise, Sethi decided to turn it down, saying he would accept an offer from any of the sharks except Kevin. I would take an offer from anybody besides Mr. Wonderful. A series of expletives followed and the sharks quickly kicked Sethi out of the tank, calling him a gold digger who had just been looking for TV exposure. Manish, you're a Get the out of here. Oh! It is common knowledge among Shark Tank fans that Mark Cuban just loves to crush scammers and that he is especially skeptical when it comes to weight loss products. Barrett, Jacques, and Krom Carmichael appeared to be unaware of this or they probably would have prepared a little better to deal with Mark. The two appeared in the first episode of the latest season of Shark Tank, seeking $500,000 for a 20% stake in their weight loss snack bar company. The entrepreneurs explained how their bar helps to lower cholesterol and block fat from entering your body through choline which they described as a proprietary all-natural blend derived from fermented green tea. Cuban quickly had enough of the pitch because he felt like Jacques and Carmichael were contradicting themselves. Despite their publicity material clearly stating weight loss, they kept saying that it wasn't a weight loss product. You can't claim that it's going to reduce 100 calories out of what you eat by taking two pills. Uh, we don't make that claim. That's what he said. And as Mark's questions got more aggressive, the other sharks started to get more and more annoyed, eventually all dropping out. While Shark Tank can be a good platform to get your product out there, it turned out to be a disaster for Miniscal. Neither one of us said we would lose weight. Look at your shirt. What, what does your shirt say? It says fewer calories, Mark. Right, how do you, you lose weight? weight? As they not only went home without a deal, but also had to listen to Mark Cuban telling the audience not to buy the snack bars because he believed it to be a scam. To everybody who's watching, don't buy it. I'm out. Okay. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.